Hello, Steve White, Steve White 39. Um, <laughs> I just watched War of the Worlds on SBS. Um, I had no idea it was coming. I saw a few ads uh, a little while ago. I didn't know they'd made it. It was made last year. It's a um, British Canadian series. I'm a bit confused because um, I heard the first episode was airing this week and then I he was a little bit late and um, I was already into the second episode. Uh, so I ended up watching it on streaming anyway and two episodes had dropped so I thought well they must be six or eight or it must be a, like a series. Um, but then I just was looking on Wikipedia and apparently it's only three episodes so that's a bit confusing because they didn't get through much in two episodes so and yeah I'm wondering how much more there is but um yeah I'll know soon enough but it was it was a little disappointing and a little predictable um and a bit surprising in some other ways um it was your usual dystopian science fiction you know aliens come to earth everything's grim and dark and you don't really see much um it went with the old let's ramp up the tension and then right when everything's supposed to happen cut to black and then people get up afterwards so you don't actually have the big um money scenes the big wow scenes um <laughs> all the effects there's really very little um spoilers basically the first episode starts off with a scientist um basically they get um a transmission for 24 hours um don't really know what it is they of course tell officials and that no one really knows what to make of it it stopped and started and then randomly all of a sudden about 23 minutes later in the um in the time of the episode but not the actual show probably a day or so later um a whole mess of uh, ships come into the atmosphere all of a sudden they don't really know they're coming um i can't remember i was thinking in my head there were 80 but i think there were 2000 I, heard, I seem to recall different numbers i should check that but there's a lot they're all over the planet basically and eventually a scientist works mm -hmm. out that they are for, um, producing an electric field that's going to disrupt people's um, minds um, or I don't know uh, basically it kills everyone um, anyone who isn't underground or in um, a metal enclosure dies so you have some decent scenes when people are scrambling because um, and this is things that you, really questionable like um the government realizes that um these devices because did i mention basically they all shoot basically like sh shooting stars or like uh, um meteorites into just the cities and all over the over, all over the world uh and the next day they're all just sitting there just um emitting electromagnetic um, pulses basically um, or fields and eventually these get to the level that um, they affect the sky and it looks like there's like a storm of electricity coming through the clouds which is kind of cool and if the government works out what's happening but they don't tell anyone else there's no scenes like in in um, Independence Day where they're different um, countries are talking to each other and that's just it's just it's just the British um, intelligence are just keeping to themselves the fact that these devices are going to kill everyone and someone um, a scientist works it out and we see him earlier um, in a, in a schoolroom doing a experiment on a brain um, of one of the students is showing um, how you can put a pulse through the skull and it can actually make um, things the body do things and it's obvious he's you know going to be involved um, and he is he contacts his son who just happens to work there uh, in the um, intelligence and he explains to them he goes to the people because the dad's like you have to tell them ah and they already know and they're just not telling people because they don't want people to panic um, before they get killed so they don't tell anyone to actually seek cover or get inside something metal basically get in your fridge you might survive um, none of that no of course not so um he just on his own um 
decision just tweets basically that there's an impending attack and to go underground or basically seek cover and something, blah, blah, blah. They don't show the whole message. I'm assuming he gives them all the details. At first, I'm like, what? He just told them to run and didn't tell them what to hide or what to hide from. They just didn't show him writing out the, um, the, me the whole message, but um, apparently someone read out part of it, so he did actually give people some actual information. So that was a bone of contention for a few minutes. I was yelling at the screen, like, why would you not tell anyone what to actually do? There's no point telling them to run there. But um, they just didn't show it. Because why would they need to actually show that dialogue? Why would they just show him typing it out? Obviously, that's what he's going to say. He's already established it with the other person that that's what they have to do. So yeah. So all this, there's a bit of tension for a few minutes where everyone's panicking, running, and trying to um, get somewhere. And we we have a few individual people, like most miniseries. Um, it just seems to be a miniseries, not an actual series. Um, there's been a few like that for, out of um, Britain, which are pretty good. Um, like the Hindu, Hindenburg and some of those ones. Um, basically, there's a mother, her blind daughter, and a son. Who um, the husband is somewhere else. There's a guy. I think it's the husband who is in a car. He crashes right before um, the pulse reaches its um, strength, and he's under the water, so he survives. There's um, that family who survive because they uh, the mother freaks out and basically drives them down um, through a car park and um, into, basically she gets them um, into the, um, the train stations basically, so they survive. There's, <laughs> oh, I'll get into him later, there's, um, who else? oh there's the, there's the teacher and his ex-wife, um, <laughs> he manages to kill the ex-wife's boyfriend and then save her and then they go off to try and find the son. Um, so we've got a bunch of random characters, and none of them are particularly interesting or appealing or sympathetic, and you don't really care what happens to them. One of them, the, the scientist, is looking for a daughter, or no, a sister, who she's convinced to come um, to the, um, the base where she is. She gets there and she runs. She runs out of a car, but we don't know what happens to her. Uh, the scientist finds a, a girl, and eventually... Um, she takes her back to the base and they're looking for the daughter and they're just also just trying to work out what's happening. Because basically, it's what I said before, um, the electricity comes into the sky, people are hiding and then there's like a big noise and then black and then people get up and most of the people in the world are dead because the electromagnetic pulses from all these devices have killed pretty much everyone who wasn't underground or in um, a metal enclosure. So we have these few survivors wandering around uh, no one really knows what's happened. Um, all the electronic devices have been destroyed as well. Uh, um, and this is one of the odd things, because I'm so used to American shows and the, um, the politics um, and political correctness and diversity, which is good. Uh, I'm a gay. I want, you know, I want diversity. But um, you get so used to it when I'm watching the show, I'm like, it's all white people. It's all um, well-educated white people in positions of power, basically, or, or what families of, and there's, like, no diversity at all. And then there's this one black guy, and he's basically a thug, who um, gets he basically hides in the back of an empty, like, oil, um, oil truck or something, um, gas truck or whatever. Um, he gets in the climbs, get, gets in climbs down into that, and because he's inside that, he survives. And he only does that because he has to hide from people because he's trying to steal or something from um, this yard where the truck is. So he survives. But then, of course, when he's looting, um, he gets stabbed by a shop owner who he then shoots because, of course, he had to go find a gun because the black guy had to find a gun because, you know, racial profiling and stereotyping, my God. Um, and... Of course, he attacks the people who try to help him, or one of them is trying to help him, and the daughter's trying to help him, the wife, the, the blind daughter's trying to help him because they find him in, in a store stabbed. And the mother's just like wanting to get away from him because she just wants to take care of herself and her kids and doesn't care about him. Um, they run away, they leave him to bleed to death on the street. Um, it's all pretty grim. Like I said, no one's likable, uh, you don't really care about anyone, you're not really following what's happening with anyone. The scientist and the girl was a little bit, um, just reminded me a little bit of um, Newt and um, Ripley from Alien. There's that dynamic of she's lost her sister and she's found this girl and she's trying to take care of her. But there's a moment which I found the most annoying where um, there is 
the Lord, the, 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 this, the army who's from the base is like um, sort of exploring the city, just trying to work stuff out, but also trying to help the scientists find a sister. And um, they get lured into this area and shot. So there are people on the top of this building shooting humans. I'm like, I'm sorry, did aliens not just wipe out 90% of the planet? You, we, you really want us to think that people are still going to be fighting within themselves and trying to kill each other when they're the only humans left? It's really the opposite of what this should be doing and could be doing, which is people actually getting together to help each other, which you do see some individuals doing. Um, the, I think the father who survived in the car, they all, they're all white people, they all look the same, I'm having trouble telling them apart, um, and French people, they're, they're just, they all look the same. Um, some guys just are like, have you seen anyone else, you know, blah, 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 they give him some water, they ask, say, hey, do you want to come with us, blah, 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 and he's like, no, I've got to find my family, so there are some people being decent, but for the most part, it's just, it's, I'm watching the scene, I'm like yelling at the screen, why would people, this would not be happening, there's no way people would organise to kill their own people, he, other humans, when there are aliens who just killed 90% of the population and attacking them, it was ridiculous. And I'm sure it was people up on the roof, it couldn't have been aliens, and why would they have guns and rifles, that had to be humans, I'm sure it was, but I was thinking, no, that can't be humans, they must, this must be them, right? So... The girl and the scientist run off. They run into a store um, because the officers are all being shot, including the cutest one, and I'm really like, he'd better not die. He was last seen bleeding a lot, so he might live. Um, and he was at least brown. Um, he wasn't, there was at least one person who wasn't white other than the stereotypical black guy. There was like one army guy. Um, and they go into the store, and there are, are aliens in there, apparently, um, and they sound like they're in mechanical bodies or they're robots. Um, we don't see them, the army guys shoot at them and we don't actually see them, but the girl, the girl goes and hides, um, and when they find her, the alien has killed her, so Newt gets killed in the film, Dad doesn't even wait for the sequel, like Alien 3, where they kill her afterwards, they kill so that's just, you can't even get attached to anyone, that was the only dynamic that was remotely interesting, and they did, killed that right away, um, and that's kind of where the show ended. There was an odd scene where there's a lady in a hotel and she looks out the window, sees a lady running down the street, and then she sees something runs after her. It looks like a dog, but it sounds like it's mechanical. And I'm like, is that an alien or is that, what was that? You can't really see. I didn't try and pause or rewind. I just, I went back 30 seconds, watched it a second time and thought, I don't know what that is. And that's pretty much where it ends. Um, the first episode ended a couple of minutes before uh, the big climax, and it should have ended with just everything going black. That at least would have been a like, oh my god, what just happened moment. But of course they come back, they show that people get up, and then the show ends. Um, second episode, not much different. Um, not much happens other than that. And it's, like I said, it's grim, it's dark, it's um, none of the characters are likeable. It's cheap, it's basically people running around empty streets and, um, you know, Canadian back lot, you know, it's like, what I have sadly come to expect from science fiction um, recently, you just have some big disaster which you can usually stage with a couple of um, special effect shots, and then the rest of the film is people in squalor and misery trying to survive, um, which of course is cheap to film, so... <laughs> No aliens, no ships, no big sets, no big battle scenes, no nothing interesting. Now, maybe they're saving something for the last episode. Um, it seems to be th just three parts, so it's sort of like a two-night mini-series. I don't know. I can't work it out. I'm disappointed, but not surprised. Um, I've kind of given up on science fiction in today's era. It's all the same. It's all dystopian, dull, cheap. Um, yep. Um, or it's Star Trek Discovery. So, damn, but I mean, I must admit, there were a few really tense moments where everyone was, the panic was really palpable, and they did a good job with the extras and staging and all that, just the people running and trying to get away, um, the cars, people on the street, the dead bodies, that was all good, but production-wise that was good, but the rest of it didn't work. It just was like a big letdown. You sort of start to get excited, and then it was just like, Cut to black, and then people are just getting up, and I'm like, that's it. We don't actually see it. 
that's what you would expect from an episode of Star Trek where they didn't have the budget, so they just have cut to black when the ship crashes, basically, and then the rest of the episode is dealing with it. But that was because they didn't have money in the 60s or even some next-gen episodes in the 80s. This um, a miniseries on today, on streaming, uh, especially in this current climate, although actually, no, it's filmed in 2009. It wasn't even set for this year. Um, but yeah, I saw it. I thought I may as well comment on it, save someone else watching it. <laughs> Watch it. I watched it basically unknowingly so you don't have to. But um, I think I'm going to go back and watch the original War of the Worlds and the remake. Um, and I don't even know if I have the, the TV series. Or was that Body Snatchers? I don't know. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, if you watched it, um, if you know anything I don't know. But um, it seems pretty simple and I'm guessing it's going to end with some little twist pretty much within the next episode we might get two episodes i'm guessing it must be four episodes like four parts um can't be three because that's just they can't finish the story up in one episode unless just it's a real non-event but we'll see